On 5th March 2020, the CS of Health Mutai Kagwe confirmed the first coronavirus case in Kenya on live broadcast. This was after the revelation that a Kenyan citizen returning from the United States to Nairobi via London was confirmed to have tested positive by the National Influenza Lab. And members of the press and fellow Kenyans, I want to inform you that the Ministry of Health has confirmed the first coronavirus case in Kenya. Consequently, to keep the citizens safe, a raft of measures were proposed to help curb the spread of the virus in a bid to nip it in the early stages. That there shall be a cessation of all movement by road, rail, or air into and out of the disease-infected area as one zoned area comprising of the counties of Nairobi, Kajiado, Machakos, Kiambu, and Nakuru, effective midnight tonight. Fast forward to March 4th, 2021, with COVID having spread into even the remotest parts of Kenya, a ray of hope was witnessed when a consignment of 1.2 million doses of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines jetted at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Health Cabinet Secretary Mutai Kagwe, who led the government delegation that was on hand to receive the consignment from the COVAX facility, said the country was on the right path in the fight against the virus. This is a fantastic moment. We are all very excited about this uh, particular event, receiving the vaccine for the first time in our country. We've been fighting COVID-19, we've been fighting this virus, but we have been fighting it with rubber bullets. But this time round, what we have received here is the equivalent, metaphorically speaking, to acquisition of machine guns, bazookas, and tanks. The vaccines arrived through the Global COVAX initiative. COVAX is part of the Access to COVID-19 Tools, ACT, Accelerator, a groundbreaking global collaboration to accelerate development, production, and equitable access to COVID-19 tests, treatment, and vaccines. The facility is critical, the critical mechanism for joint procurement and pooling risk across multiple vaccines so that whatever vaccine is proven to be safe and effective, all countries within the facility will be able to access them. Most importantly, it is the mechanism to enable a globally coordinated rollout. The World Health Organization has so far approved six COVID-19 vaccines for emergency use, including AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Sinopharm, Sinovac, Johnson & Johnson, and Moderna. The organization has emphasized the safety of the approved vaccines and urged Kenyans to maintain public health measures while the national vaccination campaign is rolled out. However, it's important to point out that these uh, vaccines have been evaluated in clinical trials in different settings across the world. These clinical trials have evaluated the safety, the efficacy, of these vaccines and at the same time the quality of these vaccines have also been evaluated. Since March 2020, Kenya has reported more than 248,000 COVID-19 cases and more than 5,100 deaths. With over 2.5 million cumulative tests so far conducted. As of a week ago, over 5,000 Kenyans had succumbed to COVID-19. We mourn these Kenyans, together with the over 4.7 million lives that have been lost around the world. The pandemic's devastating impact on global travel, tourism, our supply chains, investment, has caused the deepest economic recession in nearly a century. There has been an ongoing strain on the healthcare delivery system. 
many hospitals and clinics lack enough beds to meet the needs of an increasing number of severe COVID-19 cases and the country suffers from shortage of oxygen for patients in need of respiratory support as well as personal protective equipment for the healthcare workers. We have got about 20,000 oxygen cylinders that are out there in people's homes, that are in hospitals and other institutions. Any cylinder you have in your hands can save uh, somebody's life. As of September 25, 2021, a total of 3,613,357 vaccines had so far been administered across the country. Kenya's COVID-19 vaccination campaign is hoping to help reach the target announced by His Excellency President Kenyatta to vaccinate 10 million Kenyans by the end of December 2021. In fact, by Christmas of this year, we intend to have vaccinated over 10 million adults, according to our experts, and we will have built a capacity to vaccinate 150,000 people every day as of August of 2021. This campaign is geared towards helping achieve herd immunity in the population to enable opening up of the economy, just as in the developed nations. As Kenya struggles to vaccinate its high-risk populations, major world powers such as the United States, China, Israel, and the UK have already inoculated more than half of their adult populations with at least one dose of the vaccine. Uh, one of the issues where we had this uh, phase or a structured uh, vaccination is because of the vaccine. Uh, secondly, uh, we also needed to uh, train our health workers and facilities to do this vaccination. Uh, so we, we uh, undertook several trainings for uh, healthcare workers. Initially, we started with about uh, 680 uh, public health facilities. Uh, we have increased that number, and our target actually is now to go to about uh, 3,000 uh, by December and 7,000 uh, by next year. So actually, the structured framework was more occasioned by uh, the lack of the vaccines themselves. Now we are having a constant supply. It is more regular, and uh, we are increasing the number. And uh, as the government, actually, our target, uh, the president, uh, uh, requested us to be by 10 million by next year by December this year, sorry. Statistics indicate low turnout for the vaccinations, especially in the arid and semi-arid areas in Kenya. For example, Samburu and Turkana are one of the largest counties by landmass in Kenya, with an estimated population of over 300,000 and 900,000 respectively. All vaccination sites in Kenya are gazetted after they meet certain requirements. In this case, the requirement is that you should have active resuscitation drugs in case somebody develops what we call adverse reactions following immunization. So the reason why we are keen and straightforward enough to ensure that all these vaccines must be within one initially a sub-county hospital, which we know that in case of hypersensitivity, we can be able to save that life. And now we are moving towards health centers and we have actually trained the people in those health centers for any response towards any adverse reaction that can be reported. So that is the reason why we are not taking it actively like as an outreach to communities, just like the way we do the other vaccines. It is because we are still monitoring adverse reactions following immunization to ensure that there is safety in vaccine administration. The number of fully vaccinated in Samburu is over 2,800, while those that have received only the first dose is 6,300, with the target population for vaccination in the county being close to 145,000. While in Turkana, over 3,200 are fully vaccinated, with close to 8,300 having taken only the first dose. This begs the question on the reasons for this low uptake of the vaccine. So one of the reasons could be because the vaccination points within the county are very, uh, very few. Like you have only four vac vaccination points. You only have the Maralal, County Hospital, Asha's Posts, Wamba, and Baragoy. And we all um, appreciate that Samburu County is very vast and with uh, poor road, work, uh, road networks and um, of course, the means of transport is not there. Notwithstanding, the nomadic lifestyle of the residents in these areas, as well as the current prevailing drought, is deemed to be the biggest challenge. Going forward, 
the best thing we can do because we are performing so well even when we were in a meeting uh, at one of the health promotion uh, one of the health promotion uh, forums uh, we were told that to, uh, as, a, as a county we were one of the people that were performing so well in terms of vaccine uptake so uh, with the other teams together with the county government together with other colleagues uh, including our CHVs, including wherever that will be available. Uh, we want to make sure that this information is the deliveries, the right information that is about this vaccine, the benefits of the vaccine, uh, even though there can be also, uh, there can be side effects here and there, but these side effects does not, uh, does not uh, surpass the benefits. Gertrude, a communication advisor with USAID Nawiri, who has been working in the region supporting the strengthening of the health systems, alludes low vaccine uptake to lack of enough communication support. This they have tried to mitigate using radio programs, target SMSs and WhatsApp messages and inclusion of community health volunteers pushing this message in the community. Uh, we are using social media uh, to address misconception and and myths uh, around COVID-19. And why social media? It's because uh, in both Trukana and Samburu counties, we found out that uh, social media would reach a very specific segment of people who are youth. And we found that, and we all know that youth are actually change agent. And they're also the largest carrier of misinformation. So if we are able to target them, uh, to provide the right information, it will be, they will in turn disseminate the right content and that we can address the misconception and myths around COVID-19. So we are basically using, uh, in Samburu we are using Facebook and sometimes we even do Facebook live shows and in Trukana we are using WhatsApp and why the difference is because for Trukana, WhatsApp is the most and widely used. And for Samburu, uh, we they have many, many online audience around Facebook. According to Dr. Salem, the ministry plans to use Johnson & Johnson vaccines in this region as it sees this as a better approach to ensure the nomadic community is able to receive these vaccinations without the fear of not being able to come back for the second round. So in the actual area, we are going to have uh, more outreaches. We are going to give some of the facilities that we'll have to uh, first uh, put the refrigeration capacity. And uh, then uh, the, the, the ministry has also selected that the one dose vaccine, that is Johnson & Johnson, uh, most of the time it will be distributed uh, to the outside and semi-arid areas uh, where we also have most of our pastoralists and nomadic uh, people. So that once they get one those, uh, we don't have a problem of uh, uh, planning to bring them back for the second dose. Kenya received the first consignment of Johnson & Johnson vaccine, comprising of 141,600 doses as it ramped up the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination program. This is not enough for the target population. However, according to Dr. Mwangangi, the vaccine can easily be stored and frozen to ensure lengthening its shelf life during administration. Is a single shot vaccine that is easily stored between 2 to 8 degrees centigrade during administration and can also be frozen at minus 20 degrees to ensure that there's lengthening of the shelf life. This vaccine therefore requires less logistics and operational costs. According to Dr. Salim, the head of Department of Primary Care in the Ministry of Health in Kenya, challenges of receiving the vaccine consignments from the COVAX facilities in time and lack of proper storage facilities also pose a challenge in pushing the numbers of vaccinated population higher. Uh, currently, uh, the vaccines that we are having, some of them need a different temperature. Some of it is negative 20, but Pfizer, it goes up to negative uh, 70. So mostly, we, we distribute it to our regional distribution point. We have our major or national uh, 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 center or store at Kitengela, where we store it first before we distribute it. Then we have almost like uh, the former provincial uh, centers, about uh, nine, where we send to the, uh, the former provincial uh, region. And then they distribute, for example, to the western region, to the coast region, uh, to the Rift Valley. Currently, 
what we have done is that uh, we have received more uh, facility to preserve uh, this is the preserve and the restoration and uh, we also uh, are putting on board freezers that can actually uh, handle a negative 70 for the Pfizer. Some of the COVID-19 vaccines require cold storage capacity that is not present in these regions, thus limiting also the type and amount of vaccines distributed in the region. Uh, because most of those centers, I told you, that is in Maralal, we have the Maralal uh, County Revival Hospital, we have Kisima, we have Suguta, and in Samburu East, we have uh, uh, Wamba, uh, Wamba Health Center, sub, uh, sub, sub county health center. We also have uh, at Archer's Post, that is Samburu East, and then in north we have Baragoi and also South Wolf. So, in those centers, I've, I've, I've called for we are having the at least enough storage for those toxins. The only capacity that we are lacking, uh, because that is really true from Dr. Salim, uh, that um, uh, what we are lacking is the capacity, maybe. If we were to receive the other vaccines like the Moderna and uh, the FISA and this other, and this other, what do you call? Uh, there is also these other vaccines that we have not received yet that are uh, supposed to be stored at temperatures of uh, uh, even below, even negative, uh, below negative 25 degrees. Then that capacity we don't have. But as at now, uh, now the some of the vaccines we have like the. Uh, AstraZeneca and also the, the Johnson and Johnson, we are able uh, to to handle that story at those facilities. I've told you. To this regard, the government of Japan donated over 210 million Kenyan shillings through UNICEF to improve Kenya's cold chain capacity for COVID-19 vaccine rollout. This, we believe, will boost distribution of vaccines in semi-arid areas. Today, the government of Japan is donating some 12 ultra cold chain freezers with a storage capacity of 3 million doses to deploy Pfizer and any other future vaccines that may require ultra cold chain temperatures will now not be a challenge at all. Three of these freezers will be placed at the central vaccine stores in Kitengela, while the rest will be distributed to our nine regional stores in Nairobi, Eldoret, Kisumu, Mombasa, Nakuru, Nyeri, Meru, and Kakamega. And there is also the issue of the regional store in Garissa. And I'm glad to note that new UNICEF is supporting the delivery of a specialized deep freezer suitable for Garissa. The observed continued inequality in access of vaccines, especially within the African continent, is attributed to vaccine appetite by the developed countries. It is a fact that there is a global problem in the supply chain of vaccines. Every single country is having problems accessing vaccines. But what we are doing is working day and night night with all the different partners that we have across the world to ensure that we are able to get these vaccines in the shortest time possible. The world is in vaccine apartheid. Uh, as you know, high income countries account for 15% of the world's population, but have 45% of the world's uh, vaccines. And low and lower middle income countries account for almost half of the world's population, but have received just 17% of the world's vaccine. So the, the, the gap is really huge. So far, we have shipped more than 63 million doses of vaccine to 124 countries and economies. But that represents just 0.5% of the combined population of those countries and economies. The sentiments were echoed by UNICEF country director Maniza Zaman, who urged the global community to unite and ensure equity in access of COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to really thank all the donors to COVAX, because basically without that, this couldn't be happening. And amongst the donors, um, for example, there is Canada, USA, UK, the EU, Saudi Arabia and Japan. While we await for increase of access to this vaccine in our country and especially in arid and semi-arid areas, this will be more possible with improved global access, improved storage and distribution and goodwill among the citizens of this country.